Hello, this is Rob Welch with For His Glory Ministries. Today we're going to be looking at a scene from the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want our hearts to be open to what God has done for us through his son Jesus. By going to the cross, Jesus has purchased our salvation and he gives new life to everyone who calls on his name. But different people respond differently to Jesus. And we're going to be looking right in the middle of the crucifixion account of two men, two criminals, both crucified alongside Jesus, one on his right, one on his left, two very different responses to the Son of God. Hear the word of the Lord. This is found in Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 23, beginning with verse 39. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? Since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Two men hanging on crosses beside Jesus. Two men condemned to die. Two men deserving judgment. Two very different responses. The first man was angry. He was before the Son of God, the only one that could help him. But instead of crying out for mercy, and pardon and grace. He cried out in anger, accusing Jesus. Because Jesus wasn't doing something. Jesus was hanging on the cross and he wasn't helping them. And so he looks at Jesus and he accuses him. He says, Are you not the Christ? If you are, save yourself and save us. See, this man refused to acknowledge his need. He refused to confess his sin. He refused to repent. He refused to believe. He just cried out in anger at the only one that could help him. And often that's how we can respond to God. That's how many of us respond to God. We expect God to deliver us on our own terms. We don't truly want to repent. We don't want to turn from our sins. We don't want to change our minds. We don't want to surrender. We want to go our own way. And we want God to bless us as we go our own way. Now, whether you call yourself a Christian or not, that is our natural inclination. That is the inclination of sin, to look to self rather than to God, to be proud rather than to be humble. This man that was condemned to die alongside Jesus was proud. He had no reason to be. He was a murderer. He deserved judgment. He deserved what he was getting. And yet he refused to look to Jesus and live. Now, if that's where you're at today, I want to urge you with all the love in my heart to turn around. 
The Bible says, for it's appointed for man once to die, and then comes the judgment. But Jesus went to the cross to take the judgment for us. But we must look to him and receive him in faith. The second man had a very different response. He first rebuked the first man for what he had said in his heart. He said, do you not fear God? Since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed justly. For we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. See, this second man acknowledged his sin. He was completely honest. He admitted that crucifixion, the most horrible of executions, was exactly what he deserved and this other man deserved. He's saying, we're getting what we deserve. He didn't make any excuses for his actions. He didn't justify himself. He confessed that he deserved death. And that was what he was getting. But he didn't stop there. Because after he spoke to the other criminal rebuking him, and after he said of Jesus, this man has done nothing wrong, he looked to Jesus in faith. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. He did the only thing he could do. He looked to Jesus in faith and he cried out for mercy and grace. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus responded to him. He said to him, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This man had nothing to offer Jesus. He could only turn to him in faith and cry out and say, Lord, remember me. And in the same way, we can only cry out to Jesus in faith today and say, Lord, remember me. What Jesus did on the cross was for that man that was condemned to die on the cross next to him. And it was for you and for me and for the people of the world. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We're not justified by our actions. We're not justified by our works. We have nothing to bring to God but ourselves and to come to Jesus in faith. And the good news is that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. On the cross, Jesus took our sins. He took our judgment. He took our death. He took our place. He took it all. He was buried in the ground. But on the third day, the first day of the week, Jesus rose to life and he's alive forevermore. And everyone who trusts in him will not be disappointed. Jesus said, everyone who comes to me, I will not turn away. So today is the day of salvation. Now is your time. If you've not received Christ, put your trust in him now. Believe in him now and you will be saved. He has prepared a place for you and me. And all we have to do is open our hearts and say, Lord, I believe. I receive you in faith. So if you've not done that, I want to lead you in a prayer of surrender right now. Put your trust in him. Believe 
in him and receive the gift of eternal life. If you would like to do that, pray this prayer, surrender after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner and that I need your grace. I believe you died on the cross for me, that you took my place, you took my judgment and my death, and you rose victorious from the dead. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are alive. And right now I turn from my sins and I turn to you. I receive you by faith as my Savior and as my Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I give myself fully to you. From this moment forward, I am yours. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and guide me to live a life pleasing to you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just received Christ, you made the most important decision of your life. Go and tell someone that loves Jesus that you just received Jesus as your Savior and that you need to be discipled. And begin reading the Gospel of John. Start there. Read it day after day, every day. Read the Word of God. God will transform your heart, renew your mind, and raise you up to be the child of God he has called you to be. God bless you. I'll talk with you soon.